Hey guys, so I'm back today with another video. So following the long chapter one and two video for the personal financial uh, planning series, today we're going to be covering chapter three. And I'll be working off the fifth Canadian edition by Chris Robinson. And so in chapter three, we're talking about setting goals and the financial planning process. Now, before we begin, I think it's important to actually identify what a financial goal is, because a lot of the time you'll hear a lot of your peers saying that, oh, I want to be an investment banker and I want to drive this Ferrari and I want to do this and that and that. But they're very vague. A financial goal is not supposed to be vague. It must possess two attributes. One, the goal's outcome can be measured precisely in dollars. And two, there is a deadline for its completion. So some financial goals would be, I want to buy $1 million. Or I, I want to have $1 million in 10 years time. So that there's, a, there's the uh, dollar measure and the deadline. I want to uh, buy a home in five years that will cost $200,000. Or I want to buy a car next year that will cost $18,000. Okay. Now, the financial planning process is the system of setting those financial goals, devising action plans to get to them, and monitoring that its progress. It is a dynamic process that requires continuous changing and monitoring, which is done in this step four, the feedback process. So the four steps are one, goal setting. So we identify the financial goals that we desire. Two, you build and devise an action plan to get and to achieve those goals, to achieve those respective numbers within those deadlines. Three, you then implement that plan. And four, you continuously update and monitor to see how financial markets change and how that impacts your overall trajectory to achieve your goal. Now, let's consider an example. So consider John Smith, a 25-year-old who wants to have $1 million by the time he is 40 years old. If he has $20,000 in savings and can save $5,000 each year, what must he do to achieve his goal? Well, step one, goal setting. Let's identify what his financial goal is. He is 25 years old, and by the time he is 40, he wants $1 million. So attribute one is $1 million. That is the precise dollar value that he wants. Attribute two, which is the timeline, the deadline, he wants to achieve this by 40 years old. He is now 25. That means that he has 15 years to achieve $1 million in savings. Okay? The second step is the action plan. Let's devise the action plan. And so this is a formula that I will introduce right after this example. So bear with me now. But essentially what we do is we want to we want to input the savings goal on the left hand side of the formula, then take our existing savings and account for the growth of our existing savings, plus the compounded effect of contributing $5,000 each year to that investment pile. And so we use the PV, uh, the uh, future value interest factor uh, payment annuity. So this is one of the formulas that we learned in, in the previous video, in the chapter one and two video. So it's the FVIFA formula. Okay. And so by by considering both the the growth of existing savings based on K, the return value, and the growth of the continuous annuity that we contribute, the $5,000 that we save each year, we can calculate the necessary return that we need in order to achieve the $1 million, which in this case is 23.92%. Now, you ask, well, that's quite a steep return. And, and in the end, when you're looking at your taking action, when you're trying to implement this plan, what investment gives us an annual 23.92% return? because there are not a lot out there. That's a really high return you're looking for. And if you want to achieve that return, sure, you can make go maybe go into the small cap space. But are you comfortable with the increased risk that you need to take on in order to achieve that return? So when you're considering step two and devising that plan, you need to ask those questions. Because in step three, taking action, you will need to seek out those return the, those investments to give you that return. And then, of course, step four is monitoring and determining if, if we continue to stay in this investment space or do we go into another one in order to achieve the necessary return. And so now let's look at that, that, that formula, so the, the, the one that we used. So essentially, let's define the variable. So WN is the financial goal, which in the previous example was $1 million. W0 is the amount saved today. K is the rate of return you earn on savings. EN is the money you earn in period T. And CT is the money you, uh, the, you consume in period T. 
Okay, and so essentially we're inputting that one million dollars, then taking the existing twenty thousand dollars over here, and do uh, and then impl uh, multiplying that by one plus k to the power of n, which in this case was fifteen years, and we were looking for k. So k we don't know yet. Plus, we already know how much we save, but the normal example or like the typical approach to determining a, a action plan is to consider your earnings and your consumption. And the difference between the two, the savings that you will have is then applied and invested. Now, if you're confident enough that you can save $5,000 each year, then you can make that assumption. But if not, then this might change depending upon your life cycle. You know, early on, you might not be able to save as much, whereas later on, you might be able to save much more. And so essentially, then you have your savings value, so E minus C, so earnings minus uh, consumption, multiplied by, again, that, that future value. And so we, we sum that all up using the future value interest factor annuity, the formula, and then add the two together to determine, based on the K variable, the rate of return, what will give us $1 million. So that's what we've already done, and this is the, um, the official model. Now, we already talked about CFPs, Certified Financial Planners. And so our four-step process, CFPs expand on it, and they have a six-step process. And it's very similar, though, and it's quite easy. So the first step is to establish that client planner engagement. Sit down with your client, try to understand, and you know, establish that initial, initial trust and rapport that exists when, you know, in the end, you're sharing your personal financial details with someone. Then the second step is to gather client information and determine goals and expectations. So maybe you want to do it in the same meeting as in step one, or maybe you want to have another meeting, maybe with, bigger, with the whole family. You want to determine the the goals and expectations of this respective client. You then clarify and present your uh, your the financial status of the family. So you present your opinion and, and then kind of counter and ask, are there any other problems? Are there any other areas of opportunities that I have missed that we can implement into the plan? Step four, you then develop and present that financial plan. You then implement it in step five. And finally, you monitor the plan. So instead of just identifying a goal, then building the action plan, implementing the action plan and monitoring progress, you've, exp you've added two extra steps to it. But it's essentially the same thing. Other than that, that's pretty much it for this chapter. It's a relatively short chapter. So I, I have uh, some multiple choice questions for you guys to work on. As always, I have posted the answers in the video description. So I will just read out the questions. You guys can pause the video, try them out, and then compare your answers to the correct answers. So question one, which of the following is not a goal as defined in this chapter? So this is a question referring to the definition of what a financial goal is. Now, uh, question two, Jason inherited $80,000 when his father passed away recently. He wants to invest the money so that he can buy a house in five years. And the expected down payment required is $100,000. What is the rate of return that he must earn to, re uh, to reach his goal? So this is one of those questions that we need to implement that official formula. The existing savings plus uh, uh, the future savings multiplied by the rate of return. And so you need to find that K variable, okay? Question three, David two, 50, wants to have $550,000 in 15 years, so when he's 65. He plans to save and invest an equal amount of money at the end of every year for the next 15 years in order to reach his goal. If the rate of interest is 10%, so K is 10%, what is the amount he must save every year? So instead of in question two, where we're trying to identify the K variable, in this question, you're trying to identify what the S variable is, the, the savings contributed every year. Okay, so the difference between earnings and uh, uh, consumption. Okay, question four, Barbara Bowens, 65, is planning to retire soon, but she wonders if she has enough money to support her retirement. Since her parents and her siblings all died before they reached age 80, she does not expect to live beyond the age of 85. So that's a 20 year lifespan. From, from her current age of 65. She estimates post-retirement lifestyle will cost $30,000 in today's dollars, payable at the start of the year. If K equals 3%, what is the minimum amount of money that she needs today in order to support her retirement? Okay, so now we're going back to that formula, but instead of looking at the K or the savings variable, we're looking at the W0 variable, the existing savings, okay? And then question five, Smith, 35, plans to invest 10% of, of her income or his income every year until uh, his retirement at age 65. 
His current annual income is $30,000, and this is expected to increase at the rate of 3% per year. If the rate of interest that he can earn on his investment is 8%, how much money will he have at retirement? So we are taking concepts now from chapter uh, chapter two, where we talked about you know the growth and the constant annuity, and we're applying it to this question as well. So I recommend that you go back and watch that video first before you you do these this this question especially. But it's it's quite challenging because again it it mixes uh, it uses the formula that we presented in this chapter, the existing savings plus uh, future savings times the uh, rate of return. And it also considers some of the future value and present value concepts that we learned in chapter two in the last video. Other than that, that's pretty much it for this chapter. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please comment in the video below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, if you are interested in buying the book, I recommend that uh, you check out the links I've provided in the link uh, in the video description. Uh, if you're interested in buying or taking the course, then you can check out the, the actual book. Uh, in addition, if you're interested in investing or in the financial markets, I also do a lot of research for Seeking Alpha. So I've provided a link to my uh, profile on Seeking Alpha and you can check out some of my research over there. Other than that, good luck guys and, and have fun.